Hey friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and in this video, we're continuing our series that we started last month about choosing the right lighting console. And today, we're talking about how to choose an intermediate lighting console. Now, the intermediate lighting consoles are by far the hardest to understand and describe, but when you understand them, and if one's right for you, then it's definitely the best choice. So in this video, I'm going to go over what an intermediate lighting console is. I'm also going to show you how to know if it's right for you and introduce you to some of my favorite intermediate level lighting consoles. Then throughout the rest of this month, we're going to talk about the different options of consoles that I recommend and what kind of options you have for getting output from them. Okay, so if you haven't already, before you get here, watch my video about what type of lighting console should I choose, basic, intermediate, level, or professional grade. Because the, the answer is not that you should always go base level, and the answer is not that you should always go pro grade. And a lot of times, intermediate level lighting consoles can be the perfect thing for what you need. So how do you know? Well, that's what I want to talk about here. Now, we talked in our last uh, few videos about the types of entry level, the basic lighting consoles that I like to recommend. And we covered things like the Chauvet Obey 40s, not my fan, the ADJ little stage setters and, you know, knockoff, no name uh, brand consoles that are similar that have these faders and buttons. And we talked about software solutions like Intex DMXs. Now, the, the biggest way to know if an intermediate lighting console is right for you, is if you look at these basic lighting consoles, maybe you download the demo software of DMXs or whatever, and you get into it, you start working with it, you watch my tutorial videos, uh, etc., other people's tutorials, and you say to yourself, I feel like I'm hitting a definite limit as to what I can do with these consoles. Uh, you know, the Obey 40s and these guys, these, these little guys here, which are really not my favorite, you hit a limit really quickly on what you can do, okay? And that stinks. I hate that because when you're limited by your console, um, ultimately, you're never going to get close to making as interesting of a show as you want, and it's going to be frustrating while you do it, okay? So an intermediate lighting console is really that next step. Some of the things that you're going to notice about an intermediate level lighting console is they're often designed more for having someone actually physically running the lights during a show, right? Something like DMXs, which I recommend highly, is designed for being run from stage from a foot pedal or automated, and it does great at that. Can it be run by an operator? Of course it can, but it's not the best choice if you're going to be running shows every time with an operator, unless your needs are really simple, okay? And so the things that characterize intermediate level consoles or software, because a lot of these are just software, is that ability to be able to run things on the fly, to have multiple cues or lighting looks running at the same time, to be able to create what we call effects and control both moving, non-moving, and LED lights with ease and, and without really having to go about it in a different way, okay? So, when we think about intermediate level lighting consoles, I want to show you two choices that I recommend a lot, and, and we'll get more into this in our next videos. We're going to do one on each. So the first is the Light Shark. You guys have probably seen this on my channel before. The Work Pro Light Shark LS1 is this one. It's a nice console. It's actually really interesting because over the past years, um, I've watched intermediate level lighting consoles go from these not that great hardware based consoles to everything going PC or Mac, to now a resurgence actually in standalone lighting consoles, which is what the Light Shark is. You basically bring a tablet or, or any device like a computer, anything with a web browser, you dial in per se uh, to the Light Shark's interface and you're able to control your lights on the console. Not only that, they've got this version that's got the, the 10 faders, they also have a version that's just the computer no physical interface, just outputs on here and an antenna for wireless, and then you can control it with your device. And so these are really great options, and, and I'm going to talk about that, the Light Shark, in further videos. But what kind of sets this apart is that ability uh, over the basic console 
to create effects, right? To be able to go in and select a, some lights, maybe all of the same type, maybe some are different types. And to be able to say, okay, I want a red chase. I want a color thing. I want some movement, et cetera, et cetera, okay? To be able to do that is something that the basic level lighting consoles often lack at. DMXs even can do this kind of stuff, but it's not the best interface for running things on the fly. Not only that, you get multiple faders for control. So um, the light shark is one that I recommend. And another one that I recommend right now is the Mac software light key. Now, light key is uh, really, you know, the reason why I choose it is especially for people that are Mac users. And hopefully my recommendation doesn't change in the future with Apple making some pretty big announcements about their, uh, their platform and their hardware going forward um, at this time. But hopefully my recommendation doesn't change. But light key is really great because what they call themselves is lighting control Mac style. And it's really this perfect hybrid, I would say, of lighting control of being able to control lights in a way that uh, other lighting consoles do similarly, but being so easy to use, okay? Now with light key, there's a recurring cost. You've got to pay for it every year. And uh, another one of the downsides is you have to have a Mac. And if you want physical hardware, um, MIDI control interfaces like this or like this are, are fully supported, but you've got to buy that separately as well as well as your output device, you've also got to buy that separately. And so we'll go over that uh, a little later this month in my video just on light key. But if you look at the cost of the software, uh, just know that that's not your total cost going in. And so if you're kind of comparing like light key to light shark and you're like, well, light key's cheaper, it actually might not be. So to wrap this up, guys, uh, you know, an intermediate level lighting console, as we talked about, uh, if you're looking at basic lighting consoles and, or maybe you're using one and you're hitting that ceiling, right? You're coming to that point where you're trying to do things and the console or the software can't do them. Then it's probably time to look at an intermediate level console. However, there's a ceiling above intermediate level consoles too. Okay. All these consoles, as much as I love them, have a certain simplicity to them. Okay. The light shark and light key are both really quick and pretty simple to learn. You can get up and going fast. Now, the opposite side of that simplicity is that it can be difficult to do really complex things. And there's a ceiling that you hit when you wanna do more complex programming or if you wanna do certain specific things, or in the case of light key, uh, really both of them, um, there's a certain quantity of lights. So if you start getting a lot of lights, it can become really laborious to program. And when you start to hit that ceiling is when you know, okay, an intermediate level console is not right for me. I need to go up to a professional grade because the learning curve is gonna be a little higher, but I can do anything. I can do more complex things. And when I'm working with a lot of lights or I want to do more complex programming, a professional grade console is actually gonna be faster than an intermediate. But I would say, you know, the intermediate console is the toughest for me to be able to recommend to people. Okay. It is the toughest to find if someone is correct for an intermediate level console because it's very quick to learn. And that's why a lot of churches and bands love these things. You can do a lot with them, but if you're going to harp down, if you're going to get like caught up in really specific things you want to do, maybe specific effects you want to create, or like really specific uh, things that you need out of a console, then you may want to look closely because these intermediate consoles may not be able to do that. And you might want to go up to something advanced. So with that, if you enjoyed this, guys, grab my guide to begin to lighting. It's over at learnstateslighting.com. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, press like and be sure to subscribe here because we've got more coming down the line for you. We're going to keep talking about intermediate level consoles. And if you're not sure after this video whether intermediate's right for you or not, watch the next two videos that are going to come in this playlist about should you choose the light shark, should you choose light key, because it's really going to open your eyes as to what kind of things you can do with these consoles, what you can't, and how to know if it's best for you. Awesome. I will see you in our next video. Thanks.